Shorty dropped out of school now. Really need a plug. Niggas don't cash hands, but you can hold the slug. Can't wait to push a nigga face back like a bug. And keep a tray eight. And baby, it's a snub. 21 and a savage here of 42 thugs. Really in the street, shorty. Wanna be a thug. He ain't want no pigeon. She ain't want no scrub. Just met and she fucking out the club. Ain't fucking with a rubber. Ain't afraid of no bug. But he gon' hit once then, baby. That's a dub. Roll first way that she wanna kill a cub. Fed up with men, shorty said she had enough. Got a heart broken, now she fucking with a stud. Now a whole generation growing up without love. Real nigga, what? No, you gotta tonight. Can't ask the repercussions of sex. It's so hard. It's so hard. To whatever, 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 to wh
trying to walk the road that we paid trying to skip the toll roads can't pay the price that we paid boots beards and the braids a few stresses and grays living the last days i showed them it ain't a phase through the furnace of affliction through the fire unscathed walk through the furnace of affliction through the fire unscathed nigga Look, i ain't talking about my jewels when i say i'm juice i go form alliance and hate i just save them some room they pick and choose that's the difference with me and no dude that ain't my bitch let she say the salute i got a rib but every entree come with a side you think you fucking with me you found comfort in lies i be weary of these niggas they come to divide i stand on business like politicians tucking their ties they say it's hate when they see careers starting to die but i'm the type to still press behind enemy lies i ain't afraid to lift the eye like my name was rahab go with them if you nervous about picking the side let god fix it if i do i'm gonna end up in cuffs i ain't letting shit slide i'm petty as fuck yeah they want to hash it out but the damage is done they afraid to pick up the phone when i'm calling they bluff yeah i'm the goat no capricorn they already know i'm upk what you asking for took so many ills why y'all even keep track of score you got the right nigga you ain't know i'm a man of war Fuck these niggas, I swear they got more issues than Vogue They always saying they ain't like that when you catch them alone I ain't playing tug of war with no internet trolls You got my low, it's an issue, come address it with smoke Oh man, got them checking for posts, what a coincidence Me my niggas hate it the most Throwing salt and pepper to your look, can't get choked Did my homework on all you niggas being some hoes Stuck to the cold, my eyes were, were purple and gold I'm as solid as they come, I ain't breaking no oath Not to zob me, stand firm, I don't bend, I don't fold Till Christ would turn, I'm a thug with my woes, whoa You can call even when my very world is falling apart, but you don't get it though. I'm not like every woman that you've seen. I don't be tripping when they tell me that I'm just like all these other women. I don't blame you. If I was them, I would have did the same too. But I'm not them, and I got sense enough to see the angles. I was raised by my daddy, who was raised by a player, a good black woman that's surrounded by Jewish neighbors and Italians in Brooklyn. Who ain't like the way he looked and grew up doing something better. Worked hard to get the cheddar. Fast forward, he had a daughter that could flow so poetic and identifies as a Jew, but ain't against no semantics. This shit is in me and ain't on me, son. It's just my genetics. The way I'm eating these beasts, you would've thought it was breakfast. But back to the message, cause they know I'ma keep a nigga secrets. First things first, if I see it, then I ain't seen it. Secondly, if you pre and I'ma peep it. In tertiary, I'm a mercenary, and freedom's on my receipt. So if you thinking shit like I won't fight for what I believe in while I'm doing the work of God, I'm pissing off all my demons that these niggas pledge their allegiance to committing the stream. Cause I know the earth was the cause before a heathen was breathing, and my blessings come by the legion. Cause I'm solid like I'm a semen They following like a sequence I know that women and children need guidance And I'ma lead them So if you provide it then I'ma feed them With my back's against the wall I could, I could still feel like 20 feet tall I could, I could still be the person you can call Even when my very world is Falling apart, but you don't get it When my back's against the wall I could, I could still feel like 20 feet tall I could, I could still be the person you can call Even when my very world is Falling apart, but you don't get it I ain't finna tell y'all how Rock got away with this shit. If I'm more right, that's good, baby. She look good, but hang with dumb bitches. Tell her I'm way too flat for one sister. And if she leave a priest, I won't miss her. Won't put a ring around it. Oh, no, no, no. Bitch, you fall the street like basketball goes. I always knew she let that lane hit her. Won't get a sick from me, I ain't simple. Bitch, I ain't gonna work it out. I ain't regular, I ain't, no, I ain't gonna work it out. I ain't regular, I ain't. use a V and not. Nah, I'll fail you, I ain't gonna work it out. Cause I ain't regular, I ain't regular, I ain't regular, I ain't regular I ain't. use a regular, I ain't. 
Took that bitch back. She done fed ya. Look how you living out. You look scary out. Can't fuck that bitch right. Cause she be getting nailed out. <laughs> you don't forgive her, ain't it? You wanna love her, don't you? <laughs> Just know that love ain't for you. It's for the world, homie. Uh, I got some real homies. We don't pretend, homie. It's UPK, one west. We kick a field goals. Let that bitch leave, ho. She got them D's, though. With a little steak and ass pussy, she be going beast mode. She HIV ho, <laughs> you dirty ass skeet ho. Don't get that shit up out your chest, bitch. Mm. Yeah, what you gonna do now? What you gonna say now? What you gonna do to me? It is UPK, I'm shot too deep, it's better do to me. I put these girls all in my training camp like I relieve. I say what I do, not do what I say, bitch. What the fuck you mean? If I'm more right, that's good, bitch. She look good, but hey, with dumb bitch. Till I'm way too flat for one sister. And if she leave me, please, I won't miss her. Uh, we'll put a ring around it. Oh, no, no, no. Bitch, you fall the street like basketball goes. I always knew she'd let that lane hit her. <laughs> won't get a sip from me. I ain't simple. Bitch, now I ain't gonna work it out. I ain't regular. I, no, I ain't gonna work it out. I ain't regular. I, you a civilian. I, nah, I'll fail you. I, I ain't gonna work it out. Cause I ain't regular. I, I get paper, bruh. Got my standards up. You a munchkin, I catch your knees, I check my favorite, I am a player, I these niggas top, block. Take your lead, I you shouldn't be worried about these broke ass bitches, uh. and don't compare yourself to simple ass niggas, uh. Had to shine a lot of these desperate ass women, uh. Cause they be tripping hard, acting like they different, baby. But a bit be basic, bit be horn, and bit be naked, thank you. Fake and stankin', the shame is dirty, my bit be fake. I don't get two fucks about you, I wouldn't have put no baby in. Bit be saying they got that paper, look, that let me itch. <laughs> I'm caught the penalty, and my energy got me feeling me. Uh, ice hitting on them, these diamond teeth that's in the meat. Uh, and I'm getting right, and I'm stacking up, and I'm getting to it. Uh, and these niggas hate, but they can't touch, cause I'm bulletproof. If yeah, I'm more right, that's good finish. She look good, but hey, with dumb bitch. Tell her I'm way too flat for one sister. Uh, and if she leave the piece, I won't miss her. Uh, we'll put a ring around it. Oh, no, no, no. Bitch, you fall the street like basketball goes. I always knew she'd let that lane hit her. <laughs> won't get a sip from me. I ain't simple, bitch. Nah. Time and shit. Make sure you let these niggas know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? Get on this motherfucker. Let these niggas know what time it is. You understand? We roads. Let's go. King Ty really one of the realest. I said, I drive by from them killers. Come like, on. I got nine lives, I got nine wives. I said, fine, wives yeah. with them bitches. I'm spitting fire bombs in your city. I got like eight or nine niggas with me. Oh, yeah. And we all ready to die in a minute. One West, yeah, we the yeah, best yeah. in the business. I get offended, I fuck niggas wow. spinning. Talking, they get it, but niggas is timid. Practice is softer than linen. Boy. Give me your parking lot pimping. What more can I oh, give them? Yeah. I've been the hottest forever. Why would I lie about cheddar? I could do better. I just put loyalty first. Loyalty coming whenever pull up in the cheddar. Every she on me, you sweater. My fault like wearing a sweater in summertime weather. Hate it so salty, no pepper. You not that seasoned or clever. I'm with the rebel. Used to pump bass with the treble. Baking a cake in a kettle. I used to cook up the work. Now I just cook with the metal. Gotta keep foot to the pedal. Yeah. Let me get the gas on the highway. Let the music blast on the calm day. Yeah. Break the clock down in the three parts. Three parts. Put the three together like my Najee. Just like Bombay, that. With my enclave, got my mom made. Ain't no time waste. No. Eating prime steak with a fine day at a fine place. Getting violated. Ah. Hey, listen. I already told these niggas, you understand? I can tell you what you say, what's up? I said, what's good, my lord? Listen, he like, listen. These niggas ain't ready for none of this. You understand? I said, listen, if the nigga ain't one west, he ain't got on his arm or his chest. I don't give a fuck about the nigga. It's just me and my niggas. We roll to him. I got the hammer, you running, man. Come through your window like brother man. Brother man. Snapping your neck like a rubber band. Oh, rubber band. Talking my dog like the sun is saying. Oh, yeah. He told me murder you rappers. Oh, yeah. I fuck sending you vertical actors. Now I be coming with verbal attackers. I might attack you type physical too. So y'all be rhyming the way y'all be shining. I'm blinding these rappers like Mr. Magoo. These hey. haters miserable, we indivisible. Look at these haters like they got no clue. No clue. Uh, they hold up ones in them W's. Really, bro, don't get too comfortable. Don't get cool. If you ain't cut from the cough, co-sign by the Boston, we do not fuck with you. Yeah. Cause you wouldn't last here. I told you. 
did the same shit last year. Already told. Keep talking that trash. I have a car. Come kick your ass you in. Already know. Your jaw like glassware. We pull up, not rocking no mask I'm there. Don't care go. if you spot us. You know how you got us. It's over. You saying your last prayer. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. You already know we live and direct. Hey, let me get a one in the chat if y'all can hear me loud and clear. You know what I'm saying? This is Cross the Line Radio. Uh, I'm going to be dropping links in the chat. You know what I'm saying? One of the links is it. I'm not taking any calls tonight. Y'all want to talk, y'all can come on the screen. You know what I'm saying? But what I am going to do is, you know what I'm saying? I got my main man, you understand, priest and officer Thabawan joining me this evening. And uh, Shalom, well, sir. hey, Shalom, what's going down, Hebrew? You should break the you should put that, sir. You know what I'm saying? I put the Mitri on for you. I'm like, I know he's gonna be fresh when he come on. This <laughs> I, you know what I'm so I, I, I threw the I threw the Mitri right on, you know what I mean? But, <laughs> Most high Christ. Uh, we do have a new channel too, man. You know what I'm saying? For when it comes down, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Tony, you know what I'm saying? Nahala, motivated always, Dasha, Dashara. Nizam, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate everybody joining us this evening. So what I wanted to do is, man, you know what I'm saying? I've been getting a lot of requests about the 12 tribe, you know what I'm saying? Breakdown. Um, a lot of people wanted to see it clear. So what I did was instead of just cramming everything into just three hours, because I've, I've had over 20 to 30 hours, you know what I'm saying? Worth of material. I, I've tried to condense it. And also extend it. So what I'm going to do is y'all was sop in the house. What I'm going to do is we're going to break this up into a series. So the first thing that I want to do is when it comes down to is attack the arguments, which I don't find arguments against the 12 tribe chart. I, I, I find emotional rants. I find um, I find people who, who claim to have, you know, what I'm saying certain discrepancies, but really they never bring anything substantive to the table. You know what I'm saying? Like, as I be asking them, okay, well, what's wrong with it? Okay, replace it. Who are the tribes? Then, oh, we don't know. You don't know. So, how, if you don't know, how are you so sure that we don't know? Oh, okay. I, I don't. I don't really understand that. You really have no evidence to bring to the table. You know what I'm saying? So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna get straight into it. We got a lot of information. Like I said, if anybody actually does want to actually come in, I'm gonna share the link one more time for the streamyard. Y'all can actually come on screen. And uh, let me just make sure that this right here, share screen. We're going to slide over here. Boom. Y'all should be able to see that. Yep. And it's working perfectly. So, you know what I'm saying? Shalom, once again, cry cry out and spare not podcast. You know what I'm saying? Big ups to everybody. You know what I'm saying? That's joined. Not the Zaga Bar. You know what I'm saying? The water for the donation. You know what I'm saying? Big ups to everybody who donates. He said, this is pay-per-view right here. You know what I'm saying? Somebody said I should put this on pay-per-view, but you know what I'm saying? Listen, man, freely you receive, freely you give. So what I want y'all to know is that when we talk about the 12 tribes sign, we're talking about what you see on the screen right now. We're talking about the identity of these tribes and these nations of people, which is really the nation of Israel. Our nation was split up into two nations and then eventually grew so big into several nations. But our king, Yahweh, you understand, is trying to bring every single one of us back together. So we're talking about Judah, the so-called Negroes. Now, what you got to understand is this is we've been around since before uh, 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 black people in America were called uh, uh, so-called African-Americans. You understand? Like we've been around since before the Internet. If if there's anything that you can grasp and put inside, this ain't new. Some of y'all woke up a week ago, look at the 12 tribe sign and say, oh, that can't be right. You and all your years of experience and studies on this topic think that you know something. OK, you understand Benjamin, the so-called West Indies. So now we're, we're talking about not only Jamaica, we're talking about Trinidad. We're talking. You understand we're talking about all the Caribbean islands with the exceptions of the other half of Hispaniola, Cuba. And um, and we call it and Puerto Rico, Levi, the so-called Haitians, Simeon, the so-called Dominican, Zebulon, you understand, is so-called Guatemalans all the way on down to Panama, Ephraim, so-called Puerto Ricans, Manessa, the so-called Cubans. Why are we saying so-called? You understand? You're saying there's nothing on screen. Let me know. Let me let me know if y'all could see. It, it look, I could see it clear as day. Hold on. Let me jumble check on the YouTube link right quick. 
Let me see, just to make sure, just to make sure. Hold up, hold up. Nah, brother, you might have to you might have to refresh your feed. Um, if you're saying that there's nothing on the screen, I'm I'm looking right at it on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? So now, and it says Reuben, the so-called Seminole Indians. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm also going to later on show you the difference between the Seminole Indians and the Gadites. Because people always ask that all the time. They're like, Oh, I thought they're all North American Indians. What's the difference between them? Naftali, Argentina to Chile. Asher, Colombia to Uruguay. And, and, and this is how I know that, that people really just resist the truth because they say, where's Brazil? Well, if you were to go on a map, you would find Brazil in between Colombia to Uruguay. I, I, I don't know if y'all don't understand basic English and I ain't trying to be too smart with y'all tonight. You understand? But the, the problem is if you come up against this chart, which you're going to get into, we, we're going to get into tonight, what you're going to learn you understand is that really you're a white supremacist mm. really you're an antichrist R really you do not want god's chosen people to come back together you understand because and, and here's something else too it says colombia to uruguay it doesn't say colombia and uruguay it says colombia to uruguay meaning the expanse of that entire area all right uh, uh and then issachar the so-called mexicans so we're going to prove all of this. Now it says, Shalom, sir. How would you, hold up, let me see what his brother's saying right now. He said, how would you do an accurate class on our people in the Eastern Hemisphere? You understand? What, well, you would have to talk about what people are you speaking of specifically. You know what I'm saying? So what, what I, would, I would need you to get a little bit more specific than just the, the Eastern Hemisphere. Now, we're in the Western Hemisphere. And from us being in the Western Hemisphere, that's why you understand this is not only predicated to where the bulk of the tribes are, but where the majority of our captivity took place. And we are in the Western Hemisphere. So now, with that being said, uh, let me come back up here. Boom. So, Thabwan, are you able to see these clear? Kind of what kind, sir? Okay, most high in Christ. You know what I'm saying? So if if you could be so kind, you know what I'm saying, to just to just read the um the first uh two scriptures up there. Come on, kind, sir. Uh Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, before you go any further, and and, and priest, if, if if you want to jump in at any time, you know what I'm saying, you're more than welcome to. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I want you to know you're not just, you know what I'm saying, relegated to um to 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 reading. And ju just so you know, this this brother is another, you understand, historian inside the school, you know, what I'm and and completely, you know what I'm saying, respect his scholarship. And and um I definitely greatly appreciate you being on the live with us tonight. And um, so now curses the, the, I, I need everybody to take the religion out of your mind i need you to take all the ooky spookiness out you understand a curse is a punishment from god you understand when we turn around and we read there's a prophetic nature to the bible all of you want to take spirituality out of the bible the bible listen everything is spiritual there's two things that i, I was completely embedded into me when i joined this school that was take good notes and everything is spiritual so when you look at this, these are spiritually identifying markers, which identify who the lost sheep of the house of Israel are present day. And it's that these curses would come upon you. And this slide is going to be a reoccurring theme because what I hear is this is the argument that I hear against, you understand, this sign. They try to say that these pe all these people do not fit the curses. Well, I I'm, I'm going to turn around and have to tell y'all that's cat. You know what I'm saying? In the most polite way that I could say it. Y'all have no idea what you're talking about. You understand? So now, one of the one of the most uh, um, prominent scriptures that everybody knows that we use is Deuteronomy 28 and 68. If, if you wouldn't mind reading that one. Come on, Wakan, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, the word Egypt is, is a Greek word for Egyptos, which means yeah, which is synonymous with bondage. You understand the Lord, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the children of Israel were in bondage in ancient Egypt 
And Egypt became a slang word for bondage, for captivity for us. And it's saying that there's a specific curse that's going to come amongst these people. And I dare any of you to find me a greater slave trade in the world more famous than the transatlantic slave trade. You cannot find me a people more famous for slavery than us. What, what would that tell you? This is a sign from God to let you know who you are. This is letting you know that like you can't go over to the state of Israel right now and find where those people prophetically or historically were ever put on ships and brought into captivity. That's right. It, it, it won't happen. You know what I'm saying? So if you believe in the Bible and you believe in prophecy, if I ask a Christian, is there any prophecy that won't come true? Then they're going to say every prophecy comes true. Well, Israel sinned against God and these prophecies came true. What the Lord said would happen, he delivered on his promise. You understand? Um, the brother Shaila L says, Salaki, sir, if I may, any part of this breakdown refute or confirm the Bering Strait migration theory. I'm not going to get into the Bering Strait tonight. Um, I do get into the Bering Strait. I wrote, cool. we came from the east. This will destroy anybody on the Bering Strait. I promise you. You understand? Like them books is really for battling. They're not even they're there to go to camp with and destroy somebody and just light somebody up. I promise you. But outside of that, you know what I'm saying? Just had to get a shameless plug in there. Like cap with his oils. But um, later on, you know what I'm saying? We're going to be able to get there. I'm going to try to move through this. You know what I'm saying? But I want you to check this out. Could you could you finish the scripture? Baba Kasha. Kind of what kind, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. When it says buy you, that's an old Quaker English way of saying redeem. No one's going to redeem you. You're not going to get free with money. No one's going to come and save you. You're going to be put in this position until the Lord says he's done. You understand? We were put and sold in the greatest slave trade in the world known as the transatlantic slave trade. Now let's get into it. This book right here is known as Black Indians. It's written by William Lawrence Katz. I'm going to be taking the next couple of slides is going to be taken from this just to set up a couple of historical premises. All right. So now it says it began with Columbus for the people of the Americas. The arrival of Columbus was hardly a blessing. See, th th this is this is how diabolical that America is. They named cities after him. Right. Give him statues. Give him a holiday. When really this man was a pirate, he was a slave trader. He raped, pillaged, and plundered. It was not a blessing when he arrived in the Americas. And, and this is this is what blows my mind is there's so much misinformation when it comes down to this that I'm going to have to show you how much gets conflated. And I'm going to show you the source of where these lies come from. Because when we're kids, they teach us that you know, the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492 and he discovered America. How did you discover America when there's pyramids here that you can't build? Right. H how do you, you discover America when you got ziggurats bigger than anything you could find in ancient Egypt and, and y'all entire law of dynamics and architecture, you can't figure out how to build these colossal structures. And you're going to say you discovered this? How did you discover a place with thriving civilizations? But it says it was hardly a blessing. On his first day, October 12th, 1492, the explorer wrote in his diary, I took some of the natives by force. You understand why? Because we were taken into captivity from, from this nation. He later found the original inhabitants to be traceable, peaceable, and concluded there is not in the world a better place a, a, in the world, a better nation. And this is why the scripture says he put forth his hands against those who were at peace with him. Meaning right. he finds these people and finds they're at peace with him. He comes to the shore, sees a stranger and they're charitable. They give him gifts. They try to be at peace with him. And his response as a European was to say that the Indians must be made to work and adopt our ways. This is called slavery and colonization this this is this is what you see columbus open the door to the transatlantic slave trade did not start in africa the slave trade started in the caribbean with the taino indians the people that were all throughout the bahamas puerto rico all throughout the caribbean the people that you would call so-called puerto ricans today taino indians all right 
Mm. Now, once again, we're not talking about the Spaniards who descend. We're talking about the natives and the indigenous. Don't be simple. This is the problem. Like y'all jump to conclusions and assume instead of asking questions. And it's okay if you want to know. It's okay if you want to understand. This is what you need to understand. That when you go to the island, let's just use Puerto Rico for an example. You're going to have people there who are Judites who were brought there on the slave trade and stayed. You're going to have people there who are Tainos, who are the indigenous population of Puerto Rico. And you're going to have people who are a part of the conquistadors or the Spaniards or the Portuguese or the French. All of which, you understand, are the, even some of the Brits who came throughout the Caribbean and then made these different ports their home. And it says, Columbus had opened the Americas to European penetration, also began the transatlantic slave trade. He started by shipping 10 chained Arawak men and women to Sevilla, Spain. In 1498, he wrote enthusiastically to King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella about the business possibilities, meaning the transatlantic slave trade, chattel slavery started with the Arawak and Taino Indians in the Caribbean. Mm. And it says from here, in the name of the blessed Trinity, if you're a black Latino or native Indian, what you don't realize if you are a Christian today, I'm not talking about the Bible. I'm not talking about throwing away the Bible. I'm talking about throwing away the philosophy. You understand the false interpretation and misnomers that they forced into us through colonization, through slavery, through lynching and through mass unaliving. You understand? I got to translate everything for, for, for the damn algorithms. But um, <laughs> you understand, it says in the name of the blessed Trinity, we can send all the slaves that can be sold. What did we just read about a minute ago? That into Egypt again will I bring you on ships. When he loaded 1,100 Taino men and women aboard four Spanish ships, the crowding and stormy Atlantic crossing took a fearful toll. Only 300 survived, but Columbus and Spain had decided and continued the profitable slave trade from the Americas. Now, what you're going to find is, and, and, and this is one of the things that, is, that really bothers me about history, right? Um, when we read about a lot of this history, unfortunately, we're reading about it from Europeans. When we read about this, we're reading from conquistadors, we're reading from explorers, we're reading from um, historians, different people who, who traveled over to the Americas, and it's their interpretation of our culture. So history is extremely conflated. So I'm not telling you to take anything outside the Bible 100% or face value. The way that you find the truth is two things. One, the first thing you got to do is look on the side of the oppressed. You're going to find more truth on the side of the people that are going to be oppressed than the actual victors because they're going to whitewash history. They're going to dilute it for their own benefit. And then also... What it comes down to is everyone who's writing has an agenda. Now, what you're going to read about is a man by the name of Bishop Bartholomew de la Casa, who witnessed countless Indian massacres by his fellow Spaniards. That's right. And it says he blamed greed for the horrors. They killed them, unalived them, meaning who? The Indians. Because they wanted to be rich and have much gold, which was their sole aim. That's what this was about. This was about greed. La Casas concluded that the New World Spanish had become devils and the Indians were the only true Christians. Because in their mind, Christians are supposed to be benevolent. Christians are supposed to be loving. And he's saying, well, there's plenty of love inside the natives. But the Spaniards conquistadors over here are committing atrocities. And it says he pointed out that Indians died off by the thousands from slavery and European diseases. Forced labor in Spanish mines in the Americas was so harsh that the average worker died before he was 26. You understand? Like, and, and is that any any different than today? You right. get what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't tell you how many, you understand? Like, 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 listen, you talk to my pops, you talk to, you talk to any brother, you understand, who grew up uh, uh, in the ghetto during the 90s. They're going to turn around and tell you, bro, we wasn't supposed to make it past 25. 
Hey, you listen to a Kanye song. You understand? He's going to tell you what's supposed to make it past 25 jokes on you. We're still alive. Like we have been relegated to the same exact position. And every decade, they just find a new way to oppress us. Slavery never ended. It just became more sophisticated. Mm. And it says to meet their needs for more laborers, Europeans looked next to Africa. The strongest sons and daughters of the Africans were seized in their homes or fields, purchased from local traders. They were packed into cargo ships and shipped across the Atlantic. Now, this is what I need you to know. This ain't about measuring whose pain is greater. This is to let you know that blacks, Latinos and native Indians are brothers and sisters That's of right. the diaspora, of the slave trade and of pain. That's right. And ethnically go back in antiquity to the lost tribes of the nation of Israel. This this is this is this is what you need to comprehend that we all went through this. That when you read about the prophetic nature of the punishments that God put on the nation of Israel, they fit all of us. Now, let me let me show you something here. Right. Um, if, if you could read, read where it says Deuteronomy 28 and 32. Baba Gashah. Kind of what kind of say. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Now, let me show you a historical reference for this. It says thy sons and thy daughters are going to be given to another people. You're going to be separated from families and there's going to be no might in your hand to be able to stop this. Now, let me show you what Thomas Brannigan, a Dublin youth who for many years served as a seaman aboard slave ships, how he described these scenes. Right. And it says children are torn from their distracted parents, parents from their screaming children. Wives from their frantic husbands, husbands from their violated wives. That's in the curses as well. Brothers from their loving sisters, sisters from their brothers. See them collected in flocks and like a herd of swine driven to the ships. They cry, they struggle, they resist, but all in vain. No eye pities, no hand helps. Read 32 again for me, Baba Kasha. Kind of kind, thy, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. Families being torn from each other, no eye pities, no hand helps. Now, now you're going to turn around and tell me that we're not the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Let's keep going uh, to the brother's question. Yeah, all this is still in black Indians. If, if I could also instill this in y'all. When you turn around and you read a book off the list, don't just look for someone else's highlights. Read it yourself. Read the book for yourself. All right. All right? And it says both Africans. Now, in this book, he's he's calling our people Africans, but th this would be the so-called Judites, the Levites, you understand, the Benjamites, you understand, and Native Americans found a shared, a found and shared a belief in economic cooperation rather than competition and rivalry. Why is this so important? Because before we were divided and conquered, we were trying to deal with each other peaceably. You understand? And, and I'm, I'm going to continue to break this down and show you that if if you are a so-called African-American and you can't stand Latino or if you are a so-called Latino and you can't stand, quote unquote, uh, African-Americans, it's because of white supremacy. That's right. And if you're still pr letting that proliferate, you're a part of white supremacy. And it says. In the century following Columbus's landing, millions of Native Americans died from a combination of European disease, harsh treatment, and unaliving. Africans took their place in the mines, meaning what? We were in slavery and in captivity first. And then the position that we were doing, as our numbers started to dwindle, that's when they started going over into Africa. That's when they started to bring the southern kingdom over here. And that's how we all got reunited. Like, like what I need you to comprehend with everything that I'm going to break down tonight 
is that collectively we all went through the same things in captivity in America. We just went through them either in different decades, in different centuries, or from different nations. But all of us had gone through this. That's right. As we continue on. Uh, you know what? So j just to drop down, it says these figures are even more striking within local areas. In 1519, when the Spanish arrived, Mexico had a population of 25 million Indians. By the end of the century, only a million were still alive. Mm -hmm. The invader calculated that more profit would be made if laborers were worked to death and then replaced. In their plans... Pain and suffering did not count, and no cruelty was considered too excessive. That sound familiar? Kind of what kind. If you could read verse 48. Kind of what kind. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee and that's what you're going to continue reading i'm going to keep bringing up these slides i'm going to keep bringing up these scriptures and i'm going to keep showing you over and over again that all of us experience this in mexico north central south america and the caribbean and it says uh matter of fact read 49 for me as well kind of kind Verse 49, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. Now, you know why it says as swift as the eagle flieth? Because that has been the symbol of every single European nation from the Greco-Roman Empire all the way up to present day America. Go ahead. That's right. Kind of what kind. As swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue Thou shalt not understand. And that's why they converted us to speak in Spanish. If, if you're a so-called Mexican, if you're from Honduras, if you're from Brazil and you speak Portuguese, we speak Portuguese, we speak Spanish, we speak Creole, we speak all these languages because of our oppressor. And, it's, and the reason that it's saying that like a nation of fierce countenance, because look how they act. It says no cruelty pain suffering did not count and none of it was considered too excessive mm. so now this is why i want to tell you that you, we have fallen victim to this agenda if y'all out here talking about negroes only which this is what y'all don't get the isupk is negro only because mexicans are negroes <laughs> right because puerto ricans are negroes that's right because gadites are negroes right all of those, all of those different, um, all, all of those different titles all came out later inside slavery. And I'm going to show you this. You understand? So now it said to prevent Africans and natives, meaning the North and the Southern Kingdom from uniting, Europeans played skillfully on racial differences and ethnic rivalries. They kept the pot of animosity boiling and they still do this to this day. Whites turned Indians into slave hunters and slave owners. So when you turn around and you say, oh, the Indians own slaves, that was to divide us. Right. That wasn't because that's something that we chose. That's something that they worked out. This was their plan. And it said, and Africans into Indian fighters. Light-skinned Africans were pit against dark-skinned, free against enslaved, black Indians against pure Africans or pure Indians, when no matter what, it didn't matter. They were all supposed to be slaves for them. Right. And it says, those who have put history into books have emphasized the difference between Africans and Native Americans. For example, they have stressed that the Europeans encountered Indians as distinct individuals and members of proud nations and Africans as nameless slaves. Little mention is made about the enslavement of Native Americans. This is why we don't know this history. And nothing is said about the cultural similarities between the two dark people. Mm which I'm going to show you the cultural similarities inside of this lecture. I'm going to show you that we are the same people, cousins of the same nation and brothers of the same pain. And it says, 
1984, the scholar Theda Perdue said by emphasizing the actual exaggerated and imagined differences between Africans and Indians, whites successfully masked the cultural similarities of the two races as well as their mutual exploitation by whites. Because they knew we were the same people and they knew that united we could be strong against them. So if you're somebody who's trying to divide black and brown, you're a white supremacist. That's right. As we continue on. And it says to disrupt their racial alliance, U.S. officials promoted slavery. Now, I'm going to be jumping through different periods of time at different, you understand, variations of this breakdown. Because what I want you to see is that they did this in Mexico. They did this in the Caribbean and they did this in North America. And it says of the five nations, only the Seminoles rejected the kind of slavery the United States wanted. Wealthy Creeks who own their riches to slave labor were sent to persuade Seminole chiefs to become slave masters all at the hands of the puppet master. Mm. All at the hands and the agenda of the Europeans who were trying to get us to enslave each other. Free Seminole men, women, and children were carried off or sold into southern slave markets. This was their doing. So now, I'm just going to keep messing with this cat and keep putting him in timeout. Hold on. So now... This is what else I want you to know. It said, in the real wilderness, two dark people met and often united. Why is it saying two dark people? You understand? Because what they're trying to let you know, because y'all get caught up on colorism, but it's trying to let you know that this was black and brown uniting. And it said, they were not driven together by any special affinity based on similar skin color. Because free men don't think about skin color. Their meetings were unwittingly arranged by their enemies, the Europeans who exploited both, meaning we realized we had a common enemy. And this is why they wanted to divide us against each other. And every time that we would come up against them, they would try to conceal it and snuff it out. It said in 1774, a patriot, a patriot, James Madison, this is, this is a, a founding father, wrote about slave revolt. It is prudent such attempts should be concealed. This is this is what they don't want you to do. This is why they give you the Martin Luther Kings and the Squantos. They give you the people that kissed the white man's ass. Our right. oppressors behind. That's what they do. And they conceal the people who rose up and revolted. And it says that they were far outnumbered their women and sought Indian, Indian wives. I think I might have put the wrong joint in together, but... I will do. As early as 1523, Hernando Cortez was given a royal order to keep Indian their village apart from Africans at all cost. Meaning, Ferdinand and Isabella, a royal order means that it came from the throne. The throne, since as early as 1523 in the 16th century, they were given royal decrees to keep us separated. Y'all are just proliferating this. You understand? Like when you turn around and you try to deny a so-called Hispanic as your brother, or when you're a Hispanic who tries to say, me no black. When you're Dominican and you as dark as Captain Mashak and you say, me no black. Me no black. Crazy. This is why. You understand? It's because of Cortez because your last name wasn't Cortez. You, let, you understand? Your surname was Yasharala. That was your surname. That's that's who we descended from. And it said one royal order forbade trade, commerce or communication between the two people of color. Mm. They were forbidden to sell chickens, fruit and vegetables and both defied the law. So when we defied the law. They turned around, you understand, and now said, no, we have to get them to enslave each other. Mm -hmm. Now we have to get them to hate each other. All right. You understand? And that's what you see today. The only place you don't see that at is in the ISUPK. That's right. 
You understand? This is this is this is where you see our people. You understand? Uh, 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 coming back together. So now, President of Mexico in 1615. L l remember, I'm showing you that this is in every century. This was in the 1800s, the 1700s, the 1500s. Now we're in the 1600s. In 1650, King Philip II of Spain received a letter from his Mexican colony advising him that division of the races is an indispensable element in controlling his colonies. But the people of color had also learned the reverse was true, that their best road to success in resisting foreign domination was to unite. Y'all don't want to be free. Hmm. What, 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 what you better embed inside your soul is that there is not one tribe getting out of captivity. All 12 tribes are getting out of captivity. You understand? All of us together. This became clear during the crucial war for independence. Mexico fought against Spain early in the 19th century because they were trying to stop all of these insurrections. They were trying to stop all of the resistance from spreading. And the reason being is because it says it says a French colonial dispatch later in the century put the matter simple. The law is hard. But it is both wise and necessary in a land of 15 slaves to one white. Between the races, we cannot dig a, a, a gulf too deep. They needed to put the divide between blacks and Latinos, between blacks and indigenous. So far, the north and the southern kingdom away from each other so that this way they could continue to control us. Right. So that we would be willing slaves you understand that's right and it says the enslaved also learned some lessons their owners would rise to any level of violence and arm to anyone protecting the bondage of their grip of the americas europeans would throw their own soldiers into the fray or hire indians living nearby slaves began to reason that their success might depend on their ability to make friends among the neighboring indians and friends do not hunt friends. This is what they're afraid of. This is what they're horrified about. And this is why they put as much propaganda out there as they can for us to be against each other. So now, now I just want to talk a little bit more about their cruelty and about these quote unquote founding fathers of the Americas, where it says there is another problem in introducing a set of dark frontier heroes. Meaning when you go all throughout history, there's so many different people like you think of Davy Crockett and, you know, French fur trappers when you don't know Chicago was founded by a black French fur, uh, fur trapper. Like, like, we don't even know this. We, we, we don't even understand how much we've played a part in shaping American history. And it says, their love of liberty thrust them against some sainted U.S. figures. Thomas Jefferson, speaking of the Indians, said, we would never stop pursuing them with war while one remained on the face of the earth. Andrew Jackson, the first great Democrat to reach the White House, was first in a long line of candidates to win presidency by boasting of his Indian fighting skills. Because this is a nation of fierce countenance who doesn't regard, you understand, young or old. They did this to all of us. They did this to Gad, the so-called North American Indians. They did this to Issachar, the so-called Mexican Indians. They did this to all of us. And it says he waged a cruel war against the Indian men, women, and children. What do we read about? They didn't care about women or children. They didn't care about young or old. He staunchly defended slavery and like Jefferson owned slaves. Mm. To save their families, black Indians had to fight off, possess armies launched by these quote unquote national heroes. And this is who they teach our children about. <laughs> Like, like if you want like your child to be educated by our oppressor, you want to create a slave. That's what you want. We're not supposed to have the same education system because they will tell us about their heroes and they will suppress ours. Right. If you could, if you could read Deuteronomy 28 and 49 again into 50. 
kind of a concert. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A okay. nation of slack, sir. Okay. Oh, kind of okay. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of old, nor show favor to the young. And what did we just read about? He waged a cruel war against Indian men, women, and children, because they will not show regard to the person of old, nor show favor to the young. They That's don't right. give a damn. So now you got anything you want to add? If I may, sir, uh, I studied in history where remember when um, Esau planted, basically they um, uh, compromised Gaz um, blankets with smallpox. Right. How basically the, uh, the, the Edomites told the Gadites that that was from the blacks as a way to divide or to keep Gad or make Gad want to stay away from uh, the blacks. Another way of trying to conspire and, and mischievously divide blacks and Hispanics and Native American Indians coming together. Because that's their entire goal and their entire agenda right. is to continue to keep us. And this is a royal decree for them to do this. And that precedent has taken place every decade, every century since. Okay. This is what they do. So now, all of that was taken from William Lawrence uh, uh, Katz, uh, the Black Indians, right? So now I want to get a little bit more into... So remember, we started this off by showing the transatlantic slave trade started in the Caribbean with the Tainos. Now I want to show you they went into Cuba, they went into the other islands, they illegally invaded Mexico, and I'm going to show you with this book right here, Lost Tribes and Promised Land. This is the next pages that we're going to be reading from. Um, I, I don't know about the, I, I don't know about the new joint. You know what I'm saying? If they took information out, this is like a first edition hardcover. When I first came in the truth, this is one of the first books they raised the price of, you know what I'm saying? Me personally, I paid like $30 for this book. Maybe, no, I think actually, no, actually it was supposed to be for 30. I paid 15, but this book at the time was $300 on Amazon. I don't know how much it is right now, but these books that I'm telling you, I would order them tonight if you could, because I guarantee you it, this gets out. Price is getting raised on everything. That's right. So now Bartholomew de la Casa, we read about him earlier. This is another person who's reading historical historical accounts about what he saw, the atrocities that was done from this fierce nation who destroys us at every turn. And it says this is page 157. It says it was customary among the Spaniards that one man chosen by the captain would take charge of distributing the food and other things given out by the Indians. Now, what did we read about earlier in food, in clothing and in want of all things would we have to go to our enemies for? And it says, and this was being done. The captains and the other soldiers on their horses of the Padre La Casas watching the bread and the fish being handed out. Suddenly, one of the Spaniards drew his sword, saying that he saw the devil before him. Then a hundred Spaniards all drew their swords and began to cut them down like sheep. Don't they call us the lost sheep? Aren't we sleep sheep that's led to the slaughter? Doesn't it talk about how these nations devour us? Unaliving and disemboweling men, women, children, and old people all of whom had been calmly sitting and watching the Spaniards and their horses in amazement. And a few moments, not a single one of them was still alive. And the hmm. Spaniard entered the large house of the village and likewise commenced to stab and to slash to death everyone they found inside until there was a river of blood as if a multitude of cows had been slaughtered. Y'all going to tell me that these natives that he's reporting on right now does not fit the curses of Deuteronomy? Or, or are you just ignorant of history? 
Do you, are you, do you just have no idea what you're talking about in any way, shape, form, or capacity? Let's continue on. But the I don't even know if I could say that word, but the sexual abuse of Peter Noble Savage did not stop with the mere abuse of encomienda. After slavery, they created the encomienda system. The encomienda system was basically like a harsher version of Jim Crow. Like I told you, everything Judah went through, Issachar went through. Everything Ephraim went through, Benjamin went through. Everything Benjamin went through, all the tribes went through. There also were Indians whom the more rapacious colonists could treat unequalifiedly as slaves, and against them anything was permitted. These came from the island that not having yet been colonized were therefore not yet subject to the fiction that their inhabitants were free under Spanish law. Slave raiding, which became increasingly popular as the Indians of the colonized islands died off under the abuse of the encomienda, seemed to find its most fertile source of supply in the Bahamas, which were known to the early Spanish colonists as Lucayos. Peter Martyr wrote this scene of Columbus's first encounters with a golden world. It is stated that the islands formerly abounded in various products which constituted their riches. I say formerly, for they are now deserted. Did it not say that they would come and eat up of our land? Did it not turn around and say that they would reap all of our land and we would reap nothing? That they would leave us wasted and desolate all throughout the curses? Right. You understand? Is this, matter of fact, grab that for me, man. Gra on. Grab that for me in Deuteronomy, Baba Kashad. Let me know when you got it. I'm going to keep reading. And it says, the reason for this is that large numbers of wretched islanders were transported to the gold mines of Hispaniola. Meaning what? They were shipping us from island to island. And in Cuba, when the native inhabitants there were exterminated, exhausted by disease, famine, as well as by excessive labor. Don't tell me who the devil is in the earth. You understand? Like, 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 like when the scriptures turn around and say, ask the birds and they shall tell you. Ask the earth and they shall tell you. 1,200,000 of them disappeared. You got the scripture? Uh, you talking about the one in Deuteronomy 28? Or which yeah, one? Uh, like yeah, Deuteronomy 28. Um. I want to say it's it's got to be either verse 22 or 32 or 31, something along there. And it said most of them died like the natives of Cuba and Hispaniola before them, not many surviving the dreadful conditions of the slave ships onto which they were crammed unmercifully. I started this off with Deuteronomy 28. Now, I've showed you the Tainos. I'm showing you the Arawaks. I'm showing you from Hispaniola to Cuba. I'm showing you all these tribes were crammed on slave ships unmercifully. Y'all ain't know this? If I may, sir, can you quote that one more time? The verse you wanted? The uh, excerpt from it? I can't. Uh, when they shall eat of the land and we shall not. Hold on. Let me, see. Let me get you the exact verse in one second. Boom, boom, boom. I should have put it in there earlier, but um, it's not Deuteronomy 22. Let me see something. You know what? Give me a... Give me Leviticus 26 and 17. Kind of kind. Is it 33? I think it's that 333 for me. Kind of kind. Deuteronomy 28, 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. You understand? That's it right there. And this is why I said it is stated these islands formerly abounded in various products which constituted their riches. I say formerly for they are now deserted. Why are they deserted? Because they came... And they raped, pillaged, and plundered the land that there was nothing left, that we couldn't enjoy the riches of the fruit of the land anymore. Once again, there's not a curse inside of Deuteronomy or Leviticus, the 26th chapter, you understand, that you can't find amongst our people. That's right. 
and it says a ship could have easily sailed from Lucayos to Hispaniola without compass or chart, guiding itself solely by the trail of unalive Indians which had been thrown from the ships. It's just a trail of bodies. Mm. It was a trail of bodies from island to island. This is how bad they were massacring us. And it says, yet amidst all these marvels and fertility, there is one point which causes me small satisfaction. These simple naked natives were little accustomed to labor and the immense fatigues they now suffer. Laboring in the mines is killing them in great number and reducing them to such a state of despair that many kill themselves or refuse to procreate their kind. It is alleged that the pregnant women take drugs to produce abortion, knowing that the children they bear will become slaves of the Christians. If you are a black Latino or native Indian who's a Christian today, you should be ashamed of yourself. Although a royal decree has declared all the islanders to be free, they are forced to work more than is fit for free men. The number of these unfortunate people diminishes in extraordinary fashion. Many people claim they formerly numbered more than 12 million. How many there are today, I will not venture to say so much. I am horrified. And y'all want to complain about the Holocaust. Mm. You want This is the Holocaust. This is the real Holocaust. That's right. You want to say something? No, nah, sir. Uh, I had that in Leviticus 26 and 17. Uh, hold want that? hold, hold okay, it. Count, count, count. We'll, gra we'll grab it later because Deuteronomy uh, uh, sufficed. Count, count. And it says now, it wasn't only the Spanish. It wasn't only the Portuguese. It wasn't only the British. This is a subject that has much been romanticized about. And at the outset, it would be sultry to remember that the French unalived Indians too. And that above all, they would surely have unalived many more had they come to America in numbers as great as those which the Spaniards and Englishmen came. It's all of these nations, man. It, it ain't just one of them. You get what I'm saying? So now, this is still Lost Tribes and Promised Land. We're on page 130 now. And it says, things were changing rapidly by now. However, among the peaceable men from the sea, as among the warlike ones, a company of Dominican missionaries reached Hispaniola in 1510 and shocked by the abuses that they saw being committed against the Indian population, immediately began waging a campaign to prevent them on the island through their correspondence back in Spain. Among some ecclesiastics, apologists for the, for the excess of the colonists, a philosophical argument began gaining currency. Purportedly based on Aristotle, it claimed that the Indians were a people eligible for slavery because they were not fully endowed with rational faculties. Meaning, this is why they paint us as naked. This is why they paint us as, not, as being uncultured or savages. Because they start making this argument so they have the right to enslave us. Because in their mind, they're civilizing us by making us Christian. Mm, mm, mm. And this continues on. And these reports go back and forth between there and Spain. Now, let this let me show you more about how they converted us. This is the, if 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 you are Puerto Rican, if you're from Cuba, if if you're if if you are black, Latino, or native Indian, let me show you how your forefathers became Christian. You understand? It says after Hatui was tied to the stake. You understand? This was this was a Cuban cacique, which was a chief, a Franciscan friar, one of the holy men who were there, began telling him about God and our faith, about which he had never heard anything before, and about a few things that it might suffice for him to do in little time left to him by the executioners if he wanted to go to heaven. And where he would have glory and eternal peace instead of to hell, where he would suffer perpetual torments. Thinking about it in a moment, Hatui asked the friar, if all Christians go to heaven. The friar said yes. The cacique replied without further hesitation that he would rather go to hell than have to be among such cruel people. 
This is the fame and honor that God and our faith have won by the mean of Christians who have gone to the Indies. You understand? And now we willingly serve Christianity. Mm. Why? Because the leaders got burned at the stake and, and, and asked if they would convert. You understand? Once again, find me a curse up here that we don't fit. F find, find me one of these that we haven't read about that hasn't come to life this entire time. Find me one. I bet you can. Mexican archaeologists identify the first Mayan slave ship to have ever been discovered. Hey, mm. Let me ask you something, Tabuan. Where are the Mayans located? And uh, the Mayans dominantly? Yeah. Uh, Central and South America? Central and South America, as well as Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula. Right. You know what we say dwelt in the Mayan Empire? We say that Zebulon dwelt in the Mayan Empire. Right. You understand? You know who else interacted with the Mayan Empire? The Aztecs. Like, right. this is what you got to grasp. So far, I've showed you everyone in the Caribbean's gone into slavery on ships. Now I'm showing you the Central Americans and South Americans went into slavery on ships. And it says archaeologists in Mexico have confirmed that a shipwreck discovered off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula once carried captured Mayans who were sold into slavery. Mm. It is the first Mayan slave ship ever to be discovered, according to Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History, which made the announcement Tuesday. Y'all ain't know nothing about this. You understand? Y'all ain't know a damn thing about this. Each slave was sold to middlemen for 25 pesos, and they resold them in Havana for as much as 160 pesos for men, 120 pesos for women. INAH archaeologist Helena Barbera McKinney says in a press release, the ship sunk on September 19th, 1861. Mm. You understand? While and while en route to Cuba, proving that slavery continued despite being abolished in Mexico in 1829. Never mind what they were doing in the 1500s, the 1600s, the 1700s. We're talking about this happening in the 19th century. Right. And a decree issued banning the forced extraction of Mayan people that same year. For researchers, the discovery is highly relevant. Said in the release, beyond the difficulties in identifying a wreck by name, it also speaks to an ominous past for Mexico that should be acknowledged and studied in terms of its context and time. Archaeologists confirmed the identity of the ship from its boilers, which exploded and caused the boat to catch fire, as well as the wooden hold side wheeler, which had been preserved. They also found artifacts, including fragments of glass from bottles, ceramics, and eight brass cutlery used by the first, pa first class passengers on board. Now, let me tell you why none of you know anything about this. Let me show you beyond white supremacy. Well, this is a part of white supremacy, but beside them dividing black and brown, why you are so ignorant. All right. Uh, can you see this clear? Kind of kind. You mind reading it for me? Kind of kind, sir. From the uh, one of? Uh, one of, Baba Kasha. Kind of kind. One of Las Casas' greatest enemies in his battle for humanitarian treatment for the Indians, Francisco Lopez de Gamora. The secretary and biographer of Hernando Cortez. Now, if I could, I, I might I'm gonna interrupt you a little bit going down. Okay. So, so you remember earlier how I said that they teach us lies like Christopher Columbus discovered America? Right. You know what's another lie? What do they oh let me just see if you know this off the rip. Mm -hmm. What do they say that so Cortez invaded the Yucatan Peninsula illegally? Mm -hmm. He meets Montezuma and the natives. What did they say that the natives believed about the Spanish? Do you know? That they were gods? Bullshit. Right. That's cat. That's that, that propaganda is just like the propaganda of Columbus discovering America. It, yeah. If I may, they, yeah, they said that uh, that the armor was shining and that there was um, Quetzalcoatl coming back. 
and and, and all that is lies. Right. And now what I'm going to show you is this guy Gamora, mm -hmm. because of the power of slavery, because of them wanting to enslave the natives. This became one of the 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 books uh, that was the most widely published in from the New World. Mm -hmm. So when they when people decided to use references according to the natives, they would go see Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Now La Casa, remember La Casa was the one who who said the Spanish are truly devils because of what they're doing to the Indians. La Casa was a quote unquote humanitarian. He wasn't making money off the slave trade, right? So he was speaking against it. And this is what he finds. Read on. Kind of kind. Um, in 1552, Lopez de Gomorra published his Historia General de, la, de las Indians at Zaragoza. The book consisted of two parts, a quote unquote general history and a quote unquote chronicle of New Spain. Which chronicle a chronicle of New Spain, meaning Mexico was New Spain. That's what they called Mexico when it landed there. Go ahead. Kind of, kind of, which was essentially a biography of Cortes. Six editions of the book appeared before 1554, but it ran into considerable difficulty. Now, let me show you the image that they tried painting of the natives. And this is this is where people get the majority of their information from from an author that wrote things like this go ahead kind of kind the author despised the indians and filled his volume with outrageous character characterizations of them so meaning just like they do in the news today you understand they turn around and they say what Mexicans are the number one illegal immigrants when really it's East Indians. Mm, mm -hmm. You understand? They turn around and they paint us as criminals. They put us in propaganda all throughout the news. Well, this was the news back then. It was this publication. And he despised the Indians and he outrageously characterized them. Go ahead. Come on, Khan. He stated that their principal God was the devil, that they engage in public sexual intercourse like animals this is why they believe we, we run around naked this is why they believe we were doing all sorts of this is why mel gibson's apocalypto looked like this oh my goodness i listen it's a good movie historically he needs to be dragged into the street and horse whipped mm. go ahead count kind uh that they engage in public sexual intercourse like animals and were quote unquote the great sodomist Good. That they were liars, ingrates, and the source of syphilis. And the source of syphilis. We're going to turn around and say that we all know that the Europeans brought syphilis to the New World. They're going to say they were the source of syphilis? <laughs> Read on. He further contended that many were cannibals. This is... This is why they say we were cannibals, because they were trying to paint a picture that we lacked humanity so that this way they would be able to enslave us. Go ahead. And knew nothing of justice, that they went shamelessly nude, that they, quote unquote, are like stupid, wild, insensate asses, prone to novelties, drunkenness, vice, and fickleness, that in short, they were the worst people God ever made. Now, when Columbus first landed, what did he first say about the natives? These are the best people God ever made. Right. Once they start to see slavery could be profitable because this, this is what you need to realize, right? At this time, the world isn't what you know today. You can't go on Google Earth and just see every civilization. They don't know anything about this civilization right now. They're still learning things about it. And the only reports that come back, come back by mail, come back by ship. Right. There's no planes, there's no emails, there's none of this. The world was very limited at this time. So they had a council of Indians and foreign relations. And this council said, you need to give us reports about these people. And based on the reports of these people, we will determine how you are allowed to deal with them. So if they get a negative report, they could deal with them negatively. How do you think they would have reported if they would have said these are actually the lost tribes? Mm. Well, considering the fact 
that Christians read the Bible and the Bible would be their history book, they wouldn't have been able to enslave them. So Cortez slandered them, destroyed our artifacts and our writings and hid our identity so that this way they would be able to continue to enslave us. And they took the words of Lopez de Gamora, who wrote in his book, a matter of fact, it says it on the bottom, go right down when it, right after the wor worst people God ever made. Kind of kind. Lopez de Gamora wrote in his book in part, quote, to persuade the Council of the Indies. This is the Foreign Council of Indian Relations, the Council of the Indies, go ahead that they do not deserve liberty unquote. if you don't deserve liberty what do you deserve finish it and consequently decided they should be enslaved and this is what they determined because slavery was profitable because the spanish were shipping so much gold across the atlantic that when they were so greedy in the beginning the ships were sinking with the amount of weight of that gold that there's literally shipwrecks that divers to this day are trying to find because there's billions of dollars worth of gold off the coast of the americas <laughs> heavy sir so like <laughs> yeah heavy now the step further and this is why you have to research your research man oh by the way this book um where is it I didn't get a chance to put this on screen before. It's this book right here. If, if you want a preset book to any writer, any popular writer on the American Indians, the origins of the American Indians, European concepts, 1492 to 1729, Lee E. Huddleston. This is an amazing book for you to get. It'll tell you about all the authors, historians, almost everybody who came to the Americas and what they determined about the Indians. And now we're still talking about Lacasas. And this is what Lacasas had to say about this book, this trash, this slander that Lopez de Gamora wrote. Go ahead. Kind of kind. Las Casas bitterly resented these slanders on the Indians' character and strongly opposed the book, saying... Its author had never even visited America. He but... didn't even touch the shores. Right. He didn't even. Bartholomew de la Casa lived amongst the natives, lived amongst them, studied them, just like Diego Duran, J just like a handful of these cats. But the cat who wrote this never even saw America. Mm. Read. Kind of kind. Saying its author had never even visited America. But merely wrote that, but merely wrote what Cortez told him to write. That's what he did. Mm. He wrote what Cortez told him to write. Go ahead. Las Casas' influence was sufficient to convince Prince Philip to suppress the book in late 1553. He attempted to get him to suppress this. And what you'll start to see is that over time, it started to resurface. And people would continue to listen to Gamora over anybody else. But you got to remember, this was only into 1553. Mm. It had already been published. It had already been put out. You want to say something? If I may, sir, it's so heavy that you're bringing this out because Hernan Cortez is chronicled that it's on record that he was so amazed when he, when he, when he saw the natives, how civilized they were, how they had... Uh, 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 an, uh, uh, an economy, they brushed their teeth, the exotic fruits and vegetables, how civilized they were. And, and to hear them, you know, to hear this is it, it's just heavy. Because heavy. all he wanted was to enslave them to make money. They said that the natives, there's reports that the natives were so civilized, they carried a pack of breath mints, almost right. like an alkaloid case. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. They had filtration systems that was thousands of years uh, uh, ahead of the Europeans. Do you know that in their canals, they had zeolite rocks that they put inside the ravines? And if you look up, the most ex one of the most expensive filtration systems you could get today is zeolites. Zeolite is literally a volcanic rock that it'll reduce toxins, harsh metals, pollutants, and absorb it into itself to filter the water. Heavy. Like, they knew about this thousands of years ago. Right. And you're going to turn around and tell me that these people were uncivilized? Right. Come on, man.
Right. That uh he also said it's in that book, American Holocaust, where um Cortez was saying how amazing he was. He felt like he was in heaven. Crazy. You see what I'm saying? Kind of like funny. now, now I just want y'all to know, right? I'm moving through this as fast as I can. We're about an hour and eleven minutes, you know what I'm saying? Like like into this breakdown. This is how much information I've been sitting on. And we're like, I, I I want you to know we're probably on like maybe the 20 something slide. I have 250 slides and I didn't even finish adding in all the information. You know what I'm saying? This is why I said I got to break this up into segments because there's so much information out there. But you have to know who is who. You have to know what authors were even in the Americas, who lived amongst the natives, who was trying to profit off of slavery and who actually was fighting on the side of the oppressed. Right. And this is why I say you have to look up everybody's agenda. I'm going to give you another agenda. If you could read the uh, read the top where it says Kurzola. Kind of what kind. Kurzola, 1943-25, did not like the Indians whom he accused of observing neither, quote, divine law, natural law, nor the laws of men, nor even observing the law of the ferocious beast. Now, unquote. why would he say this? He would say this just like Gamora. He would say this just like Jose de Acosta, a Jesuit priest. Mm. Everybody talks about how the Jesuits are, you understand, <laughs> some of the earth. But then you quote them to speak against the natives like he didn't have an agenda. Come on, man. Keep reading, Baba Kasha. Kind of kind. Therefore, it was just for Spain to wage war against the Indians to return them to their rightful ruler and to make Christians of them. So now, any, so what are we learning here right now? Anybody who hated the natives was because they wanted to enslave them, mm. was because they wanted to get some cash. That's you understand? Right. Was because they wanted to profit, gain in the slave trade. Keep reading. Kind of kind. Sometimes the Spaniards were too zealous in their opposition to native beliefs and customs of the Indians and found it necessary to explain their conduct. So now it says they were too opposed and they were and some people were sitting down and trying to understand them. Keep reading. One such was Diego de Landa, who in 1566, completed in his Relacion de las Cosas de Yucatan to justify his actions toward the Indians of that province. So meaning they continue to write negatively about them to continue to oppress them. And this is anybody who is either in league with Cortez or anybody who is in league with the slave trade in the Providence. Go ahead. Like so many other early works on America, it was not published in his lifetime. That first publication was an incomplete French translation in 1864. The complete version in Spanish appeared in Madrid in 1881. In this case, the lack of publication was not critical since Landa made only two brief references to the origins of the American Indians. After relating an Indian legend of people coming from the east. So meaning he from the tradition. Now, this is something that he did put in his book. He was trying to figure out who they were. He didn't like them, spoke negatively about them. But he wrote about one of their oral traditions. And he says this was an Indian legend and oral tradition. Go ahead. After relating an Indian legend of people coming from the east through 12 paths open through the sea, Landa observed that if this were true, they would be Jews. <laughs> and, and this is why I wrote a book saying we came from the east because the natives out of their own mouth said they came from the east. So now. The history of ancient America anterior to the time of Columbus. So now remember, we're talking about Cortez in Mexico. So now Sahagun was a historian who lived nearly 60 years with the Mexicans and wrote 
15 years after the conquest by Cortes, 1520. And it says, the Aborigines of the country first touched down at Florida, then coasted along until they reached the Bay of Honduras, and then they landed. It will be observed that terms like touched, coasted, and landed are phrases belonging exclusively to navigation. This confirms the reply of Montezuma right. that his ancestors originally came from the east. For by navigation only could they come from that quarter. And as a consequence, they sailed towards the west and across the Atlantic Ocean. Out the mouth of Montezuma, the emperor of the empire, who met Cortez. This is what he told them about their people. Said, we crossed the Atlantic, we touched down in Florida, came down into Central America. And it says, and now it says, Cortez wished to sail around the Bay of Honduras, the point of Yucatan and thence into the Gulf of Mexico, and inquired if there were descriptions of these coasts. Montezuma instantly presented to the Spaniard maps and charts of the entire coast. And from these, Cortez steered and sailed his perilous voyage around Honduras, and by the correctness of the charts, he accomplished his expedition in safety. Hmm. Do y'all hear this? Now, I thought these people were uncivilized. Right. <laughs> I thought they were clueless. I thought they were savages. You, you mean to tell me they have nautical maps? You, you mean to tell me they had cartographers amongst them who were able to accurately chart the entire coastline of the Americas? And, 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 and here's another lie. They try to turn around and act like Israel hasn't had any maritime skills. Maritime skills meaning talking about sailing. You mean to tell me the Bible doesn't talk about King Solomon's navy? Right. You, you, you mean to tell me that the Bible doesn't talk about how he would send his ships out on year, voy uh, year voyages, year and a half voyages? Right. No. They try to suppress this information because they do want us to know we crossed the Atlantic. There goes your bearing straight. It's out the window. This is out the mouth of the natives themselves. This is their legends. This is their oral traditions. This is their history. Let's go a little further. Should we go into South America? How about the conquest of Peru? You understand this book was published in the 1800s, all right? And it says, the, and it's talking about the civilization of the Incas, all right? So this is, this is literally going to talk about, you understand, the conquest all throughout South America and the different islands. And I'm going to jump through some of this history. If, if you could, right, could you get me Deuteronomy 25 lined up? And then could you also line up uh, Psalms 55 and 3? Come on, come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go there first. So I'm going to read this while you get those, all right? Kind of okay. So it says, so now this was on an expedition as they're moving through and they're getting ready to conquer the natives inside of South America. And it says, at length they reached a thick settled hamlet or rather town in the providence of Coque. The Spaniards rushed on the place and the inhabitants without offering resistance, fled in terror to the neighboring forest, leaving their effects of much greater value than had been anticipated in the hands of the invaders. We fell on them sword in hand, says one of the conquerors with some of the Navati. For if we had advised the Indians of our approach, we should have never found their such store of gold and precious stones. The natives, however, according to another authority, stayed voluntarily, for as they had done no harm to the white men, they flattered themselves none would, would be offered to them, but that there would be only an interchange. They're going to find out how sadly mistaken that they actually were. And when you read this book, 
you're going to read how even when the Spanish don't pursue them, they would flee. They would run in fear, especially once their reputation started to spread throughout the different tribes and throughout this land. If you got Deuteronomy, if you could read Deuteronomy 28 and 25. Come on, what kind? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth and that's exactly what happened to us man you understand we've been conquered removed into different kingdoms and when they came through we would flee drop that give me psalms 55 and start at verse 3 for a second and Come i'm going to say it says of good office with the strangers and an expectation founded, it may be on the good character with the Spaniards had established for themselves on their preceding visit, meaning when the Spanish first came, they were acting like they were peaceable, but in which simple people now found themselves most unpleasantly deceived, meaning what? Now they started slaughtering them. Now they're running down on them with sword in hand. Read Psalms 55 and 3. Kind of what kind? Psalm chapter 55 verse three because of the voice of the enemy because of the oppression of the wicked for they cast iniquity upon me and in wrath they hate me you understand this is our enemies they cast wrath upon us and they hate us and let me tell you what else they do drop down to verse 20 and read into 21 baba kasha kind of what kind verse 20 he hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him Puts for he's he puts these people are peaceable. That's what it said when Columbus landed. It said these are the most peaceable people on earth. Let's force them to work. Let's put them in slavery. Go ahead. Kind of kind. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Because when they first came, they came in friendship. Now they find out that they've unpleasantly been deceived. Go ahead. He has put forth. Oh, it's like it. Twenty-one. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter but war was in his heart and that's what they do man they try to make war with us now let's talk about some of the wars that they made with us can you get me deuteronomy 28 and 22 while you okay. get that it says to add to their distress a strange epidemic broke out in the little army it took the form of ulcers or rather hideous warts of great size which covered the body and when lanced it was in some case discharged such quantity of blood as proved fatal to the sufferer, several died of this frightful disorder, which was so sudden an attack and attended with such prostration of strength that those who lay down well at night were unable to lift their hands to their heads in the morning. The epidemic, which made its first appearance during this invasion and which did not long survive it, spread over the country, sparing neither native nor white man. It was one of those plagues from the vile wrath which the destroying angel who following in the path of the conqueror pours out on the devoted nations. Read Deuteronomy 28 and 22. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 22. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish you understand meaning all of these different diseases that they brought that they spread that they came over all throughout the americas this is what they did man mm -hmm. you understand the spanish really exper ex experienced on their march either resistance or annoyance from the inhabitants who instructed by the example of their chief fled with their effects into the woods and neighboring mountains what did we just read that we would flee into seven different directions man no one came out to welcome the strangers and offer their rights of hospitality as on their last visit to the land for the white men were no longer regarded as good beings that had come down from heaven, but as ruthless destroyers who were invulnerable to the assault of the Indians, were borne along on the backs of fierce animals swifter than the wind, mm. with weapons in their hands that scattered fire and desolation as they went. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 48 and read into 51. Deuteronomy 28. 
does this not describe Deuteronomy perfectly? <laughs> like, how many times have we done this tonight? And we did this in the Caribbean, North America, Central America, and South America. Don't tell me we're not God's chosen people. That's right, sir. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Go ahead. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. You don't, you don't see that it says, we're born along the backs of a fierce animal, swifter than the wind, with weapons in their hands. Go ahead. Kind of what kind. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. So now, and it says of the invaders which preceding them from every march. Now, let's continue to read about what they did, man. You understand? It says the presence, matter of fact, hold where you're at. Get me uh, Leviticus 26 and 17. Got it, sir. And it says the presence of their detested rivals was by no means grateful the jealous inhabitants of Punya and at prolonged residence of the white men on their island could not but be others otherwise than burdensome. Mm. You understand? This was a plague that was sent from the Lord. In their outward demeanor, they still maintain the same show of amity. But Pizarro's interpreters again put him on his guard against the proverbial perfidy of this of their host with his suspicions thus aroused the the spanish commander was informed that a number of his chiefs had met together to deliberate on a plan of insurrection not caring to wait for the springing of the mine he surrounded the place of meeting with his soldiers and made prisoners of the suspecting chieftains according to one authority they confessed their guilt this is by no means certain, nor is it certain that they meditated an insurrection. Yet the fact is not improbable in itself, though it derives little addition probability from the assertion of the hostile interpreters, meaning that the interpreters was saying this. You know what I'm saying? Meaning that they were hostile against the Indians. They hated the Indians. It is certain, however, that Pizarro was satisfied with the existence of a conspiracy. And without further hesitation, he abandoned his wretched prisoners, 10 or 12 in number, to tender mercies on their rivals of Tumbes, who instantly massacred them before their eyes. Read on. Leviticus 26 and 17. And I will set my face against you. And ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. Good. Verse 18. And if you will not, it's like it, and if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. And this is what the Lord is explaining. You understand that we're we're being destroyed by the sword, we're being sent out and dispersed. You understand from coastline to coastline. Why? You understand? Because we sinned against the Lord. And it says the hearts, if not the native again, meaning that they close their hearts, exhausted by the fatigue of travel and disease and grievously disappointed at the poverty of the land, which now offered no compensation for their toils to the soldiers of Pizarro, cursed the hour in which they had enlisted under his standard. Because what did we what did we read earlier? The same thing that they did in the Caribbean, the same thing that they did all throughout. They destroyed our land that used to yield fruit. And they did this, and it says, under his standard, and the men of Nicaragua in particular say that the old chronicler calling to mind their pleasant quarter in the luxurious land sighed only to return to their Hamatian paradise. Meaning what? They destroyed the land. We couldn't eat of the fruit of it anymore. It became barren and desolate, man. Now, reading on a little more. This says that the blood stay pure. It says Negroes, according to her book in 2013, that the blood stay pure. The term origins that can be traced to medieval Italy, where it's classified of a skin color, not race. 
Additionally, Europeans often refer to indigenous populations of their communities as Negroes. The Portuguese colony of Brazil, Indians were called Negroes da, de la Terra, meaning Negroes of the land. Mm. This is why I turned around and told you we're Negro only. <laughs> right. Because the Indians and the natives, you yeah. understand, are Negroes. This is what they were called. It wasn't about a racial distinction. Like the problem is y'all got too much Johann Blumenbacher in y'all. Mm. The problem is in y'all mind, this is what y'all think. Y'all think that everybody's broken down into Negroid, Mongoloid, and Caucasoid. When the first thing that was broken down was Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Those are the first three distinctions. Then from there, it breaks up into 17 different nations. The problem is, once again, white supremacy has polluted your minds. So now, uh, boom, let's start with this. So now, remember, I showed you that the Mexicans went into slavery with ships. The Puerto Ricans, the Dominicans, the Cubans, the Central Americans, the South Americans. But Kataza, what about the North American Indians? In the 1600s, law said the closest Indians were guilty of murder. Chief Lynette, now, just so you know, like, this is what happens when, when you're in rulership. When you're in rulership, if you find somebody from your town who's been unalived, everyone from your town is supposed to go fall on the next town. Isn't that a law in the Bible? You understand? Like, that's literally the law when it comes down. Everybody always wants to worry about concubines. That concubine law was talking about if the town was guilty, those are the enemies you go to war with. But you, you can't understand that being a peon. You can't understand that when you're not in rulership. You can't understand that no other nation should be able to lay a hand on one of your people without consequence. And it says, Chief Lynette Alston of the Nottawa Indian tribe of Virginia discussed Native American traditions, culture, identity at the conference. Alston shared that in October of 1665, according to Henning's statutes at large, the laws of Virginia that if an Englishman was murdered, the closest Indian town would be held accountable for the crime. What else would they do? When authorities in 1680 assumed that Suko had committed a murder, they all reenacted Henning's statute and ordered all children under 12 be endangered to the English as servants until the age of 24. And it says... They shall be transported beyond the sea to England or some of the islands, and they're bound or sold for seven years. Let's take it a step further. Transatlantic slave trade. Histories of the transatlantic slave trade typically focused on those enslaved in North American colonies and often overlooked its southern counterparts. Check this out. Yet not unlike North America, slavery existed in South America even before African slave importation transformed the region's landscape after christopher columbus's discovery of the americas in 1942 much of south america was divided between the spanish and the portuguese with the treaties of tordesillas in 1494 you understand now when the europeans arrived in south america they enslaved the native inhabitants and used them as free labor force on their mines and the cotton sugar, coffee, and tobacco plantations that were being developed. So whenever you see that post online, right, that turns around and says, when were Mexicans picking cotton? You understand? When were the South Americans picking cotton? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, it was about 200 years before they brought Judah over. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's when. Problem is, y'all don't know history. So now, let's keep going. Uh, this is a mural of the arrival of Cortez. You understand? So now, once again, we don't have photographs of any of these things. What we have is we have murals and paintings of descriptions of the atrocities that had taken place. Mm. Now, transatlantic slave trade. Native American slavery is a piece of history. It's like it is a piece of history of slavery that has been glossed over, says Lyndon D. Fisher. Associate Professor of History at Brown University.
between 1492 and 1880, between 2 and 5.5 million Native Americans were enslaved in the Americas in addition to 12.5 million African slaves. While natives had been forced into slavery and servitude as early as 1636, it was not until King Philip's war that natives were enslaved in large numbers. Fisher writes in a study that in 1675 to 1676, war pitted Na Native American leader uh, against King Philip, also known as Medicom, and his allies against the English co colonial settlers. During the war, New England colonies routinely shipped Native Americans as slaves to Barbados, Bermuda, Jamaica, Azores, Spain, and Tangier in North Africa. Y'all see this? So y'all want to turn around and act as if the North American Indians don't fit the curses? How did I just prove that every single one of us went into Egypt again with ships? From the Mayans to the Tainos to the Arawaks to the Cubans to everybody. Somebody proved me wrong. That, that's what I really want. Like, in, instead of y'all just talking trash, why don't y'all come with your sources? Mm. Like, you know, I, I did I did this lecture. When, when did I do this lecture? Like 2018? Uh, right, in Chicago. In Chicago. I think it was 2018, 1920, 1, 2, 3, 4. Six years ago, I put out a challenge to refute any information. Nobody did nothing. Y'all didn't take one artifact. You didn't take one scholar. Nothing did you refute. I put three hours worth of material out there. You couldn't find 60 seconds? Oh, okay. Let's keep going. English authorities focused first on disarming natives either by selling guns turned in by surrenders or prohibiting them from bearing arms isn't this the same thing that they did with judah right everything you're going to find out judah went through the natives went through everything the natives went through judah went through and it says Fisher writes, English communities objected to letting natives who surrendered simply go free and housing and feeding surrendered Native Americans were simply sold into slavery, both overseas and with New England or forced into servitude for limited terms within English household. In addition, Native communities were asked to pay an annual tribute of five shillings per male as an acknowledgement of their subjection hmm. to the government of Connecticut, according to the study. Fisher also argues that there was an ideological component to enslaving Native Americans. Among colonists, there was a presumption involving the innate inferiority of natives, meaning th as long as they turn around, right, and they say that we're inferior, that we're savages, then guess what? Now they will turn around and they will have an excuse for manifest destiny. They'll have an excuse for slavery. They'll have an excuse for kill the Indian, save the man. They'll have an excuse for boarding schools. They'll mm. have an excuse for any level of oppression that they want to put us through. Mm. All right. And it says there were proto racial notions of European superiority plus an appetite for land. He says, if you look at the history of the colonies, slavery happens almost right away. Fisher says he is increasingly convinced that the colonists slavery was a normal part of their mental framework. Some free Native Americans working with the English tried to influence where Native American surrenderers would be settled and how they would be treated. Fisher writes like Uncas, the sachem of the Mohegans in Connecticut. Let's keep going. We got about 20 minutes left. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to try to cram too, too much more information in here. But what I wanted to do was the first thing I want to do is I, I want y'all to be able to defend the faith. You understand? Like, like I, I want y'all to be able to turn around and I want y'all to be able to utilize this information 
to bust anybody upside the head who tries to say that the North American Indians are not Israelites. So now, just so y'all know too, eventually I'm going to, uh, um, as time goes on, um, I'm, I'm going to get into Judah. I'm going to get into Benjamin. I'm going to get into Levi. But the number one thing is that they have problems with colorism. You understand? They have problems with uh, uh, ignorance to history. So one of the arguments is that we do not fit the curses. Where? Tell me I'm lying. You understand? F find me something in the last hour and 40 minutes that I lied about. I bet y'all can't do it. So now, the shadow of native enslavement in New England extends into the 18th century and beyond, Fisher says. There are records of people petitioning for freedom in the 1740s who were descendants of the Native Americans first enslaved during King Philip's War. In the study, he writes, small legal loopholes and dishonest practices on the ground of ensuring that in many cases, limited term service turned into lifelong and even heritable slavery. Heritable. Heritable, meaning your children as well. You understand? Like, 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 like this is this is what blows my mind, right? Y'all remember, y'all remember that story of um uh, 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 of uh, the brother. Who saw the who saw the white girl banging on the door, and he goes and busts the door open and frees her, and then says, "What's your name?" And then when he when he calls nine one one nine one one says, "Man, we thought she was unalive," and then they pull up and they find out that this cat held three people hostage inside of a basement, two women and one baby, and the baby was born in that basement. Mm. Let me ask you something, right? How many charges of kidnapping did he get charged with? You know? Wow, sir. Three. Mm. Three charges of kidnapping. But he only kidnapped two girls. Why did he get three charges? The, the child. Because they said the baby was born in captivity. Every black Latino and native Indian was born in captivity and they can't see that. Mm. Every black Latino and native Indian is a child of this diaspora, of this colonization, of this oppression. You understand? It's literally been inherited mm. and they can't see that. And instead they say things like, oh, you're lazy, this, that, X, Y, Z. Instead, they continue to oppress us, push this propaganda, demoralize us, devalue ourselves. When this is what they've done. And they've been doing it since 1492. And, and, and this, this, is, this is what I'm trying to explain to you. I only grabbed small excerpts from each tribe. You get what I'm saying? Like, like if I was to sit here and go over all the accounts, all the hangings, every time they suck, uh, stuck dogs on us. Every time there was a massacre or a slaughter, I could teach this class until Christ returns. <laughs> that's the that's 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 the stacks, the making of books of this oppression. There is no end. Mm -hmm. This is this is just a small portion of the history. So now, and it says. Uh, a law passed the same year by Rhode Island General Assembly seemed on the surface to outlaw Indian slavery, but Fisher notes in practice that the other laws ensured that native surrenders were disposed of for the benefit of the colony with various terms of servitude. For the Native Americans, five years of age or younger, their servitude lasted until they were 30 years old. You understand this is th this is what they do in the prison system. Right. You know what I mean like they make outrageous laws, you know what I'm saying to 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 have you there forever. Right. 
So now it says these enslavement practices permanently disrupted the, the lives, livelihood, and kinship network of thousands of Indians, Fisher writes, and sometimes slavery was simply given another name. I, I, I mean, it, 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 you, you want to know another name for slavery? Uh, prison industrial complex. You understand? Like, 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 like this is this is what they've done. Slavery did not end. Slavery only became incorporated and sophisticated. So now we got about 14 minutes left. You had anything you wanted to add? I, I did have a precept if I could. Come on with it. Because you were bringing out how, how basically Native Americans and the Hispanic tribes, you know, so to speak, how they went into captivity and, and how the knowledge of them going on cargo slave ships is almost suppressed. Like it's not general information. You don't really learn that. At least I didn't learn that in high school and middle school that Native Americans and, and Arawak and Taino Indians and Carib Indians were a part of the slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade going back to the 1400s. So I wanted to read this um, in Jeremiah 50 and 33. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast. What I wanted to point out was together. When you look up that word together, I believe it's um, the Hebrew word is yakad. It means alike. They were oppressed alike, like in the same way, in the same fashion. Judah went on cargo slave ships, and as Captain Kazaz has been, you know, proven without a shadow of a doubt, all the tribes went in, went on ships, and w which would mean what? That we fit the curses. So I yield, sir. So like, nah, you straight. I, I'm I'm gonna end as far as any more information. You know what I'm saying? Um, f from that point, I, I believe we're about like 36 to 37 slides deep. Um. See. I'm gonna let me double check right now. Hold on, I'm gonna stop sharing up here. Hold on. Uh, where are we at? Oh no, actually, we're pretty deep, bro. <laughs> hey, we're we're like what? Damn, we made it through five slides. Yeah, that's pretty dope. I didn't think we were gonna get through this much information. This is incredible. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um. So just so y'all know, um. The next time that I do this breakdown is going to be on Tuesday. Uh, what I'm also going to do is for anybody who's been watching on Captain Azariox, I, I should have did this earlier. But if any of you are watching on uh, Captain Azariox channel, you know what I'm saying? Um, what I need y'all to do is subscribe to our new channel. So our we have a new cross the line channel. Uh, where that where uh, that we're rebuilding. So if you want to be able to catch this, everybody over there, what I want y'all to do is click the link that I'm going to put in the chat right now and subscribe to this channel. Um, I'm going to end the live on um, on Captain Azariox's channel. I appreciate all y'all who joined in. If you want to continue this live and if you want to see part two of this series next week, make sure you subscribe to that new channel. All right. And um, now we're just live on this channel. Um, outside of that, you know what I'm saying? So what I, what I, basically ju just for everybody who's still with me, everybody who's over here, what I want you all to know is that I'm going to be breaking this down into different pieces. So the next time that I break this down is going to be continuing the curses, continuing, you understand, the punishments that the Lord put on us. From there, I'm going to go through our migration from the Assyrian Empire into the Americas. And then from, from that migration, I'm going to go through Arsareth, what Arsareth really is, what Arsareth really means. Um, I'm going to go through um, Christopher Columbus, his voyage, uh, you know what I'm saying? Everything that, that he did and, 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 and transpired as far as, you know what I'm saying? His dealings with Spain and how he really, Christopher Columbus 
was not Italian. He was actually from Spain and he was a converso, meaning he was a new Christian, which means he was Jewish. He was a part of the Sephardim from Spain, but he was one of the ones who converted. That's right. <laughs> so, so there was a Jewish community that was inside of Spain that originally was us. And then what happens is through them converting and coming into the community, when the Inquisition started, they started to push us out first. And then the people who stole our identity in Spain in order to keep their titles, their lands, and, and to not be oppressed by the Spanish Inquisition, what they did was they converted to Christianity falsely. When it was really Jewish men who funded Columbus's ships, uh, voyage, journey, and all that. Um, for anybody else who joined over here, man, make sure that y'all subscribe to this channel. Also, uh, not only subscribe to this channel, hit the bell so that you'll get any alert when we go live. Um, share this, you know, share this with your friends, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend. And, um, what, um, what, what else goes on is, so once I get past the migration, I'm going to destroy the Bering Strait theory. I'm going to show you about the actual migration legends that the Indians themselves said, all the natives of the Americas, when they were talking about where they came from directly. And then once we get past that, then I'm going into all the archaeology as to who we are. Mm -hmm. And then once we get past all the archaeology, I'm going to show you what they did to suppress this information. So I'm going to break this up into a couple of um, into a couple of different, um, you know, portions. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to share the link to the stream yard. If anybody has any questions that they want to come on towards the end, you're more than welcome to in the last few minutes of the show. Um, you know what I'm saying? Unless you got anything else to add, Thabo <laughs> No, nah, that was, I mean, I, I watched the lecture, but I mean, going over, the, going over what you're going over, sir, I mean, I don't have, I don't understand how anybody could speak again, <laughs> speak against the, not the information that's being brought out. It's, it's, you know, ridiculous. <laughs> Bro, right. it's, it's, it's really, it's really just that hate that we talked about in the beginning of the lecture. It's that, from the 1500s, there was royal decrees to make sure that Judah and Ephraim never united, that black and brown never came together, that they would keep us separated. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're just, you know what I'm saying? Like, like they, they still have the hate in their heart that separated the kingdom in the first place. Right. And that's why, matter of fact, um, let's close out with this. Could you go to Isaiah 11 and could you start at... Um, I guess we could just get straight to the point, maybe 11 and 13. Isaiah 11. That's crazy because that's what I was looking for. I, I was in five. <laughs> that's the Lord. That is I, the most high Christ. Yeah. I, Isaiah 11 and straight to the point. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I want to I get straight to, you know, like the, you know, the root of it. Okay. Isaiah 11 and 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. You understand? So we have a history of Judites vexing Ephraim, of, of abusing their authority, their rights, and their privileges against Ephraim, and, and really against all the tribes, where, uh, where Judah gets in power, it goes to their head, and instead of understanding their brother, Instead of building with their brother, they would dismiss them. And as a result, Ephraim became envious of rulership because they don't want to be vexed by Judah. You know what I'm saying? It, it was a Judite that said, I'm going I'm to make my father's rod look like my pinky finger, meaning with how hard and heavy he was going to rule and come down on the tribes. So all of that comes out because of the root of Jesse, which is Christ. Right. When all the nations start to come back together that Ephraim and Judah can stop envying and vexing each other. Where Ephraimites don't have problem that a Judite, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, in the ancient tongue, in, in the Lashwan Kudash, you understand that we won't have a problem with a Judite being our king. 
That's right. And him being so righteous, you understand, he will not vex us and will not oppress us and will not perform tribalism and will not abuse his power against his brother. Damn right. You understand? And as a result, we'll all be able to coexist, you understand, together. And and that's what happens. You understand? Like, like uh, um, let me see these comments. And it said, like, two sticks become one. You know what I'm saying? Like the two, the two sticks of wood become one because this that's what Yahweh Shah came to do. Yahweh Shah came to bring this nation together. And that's really, you understand, what, what the 12, 12 tribe sign is. That's right. you know, like, you know, it's like like before I before I was in the truth, before you understand, I joined the ISUPK. Um I, I was partaking in some illegal activities in Miami. <laughs> and while I was out there somebody handed me a flyer and when they when i saw on the flyer next to ephraim it said taino and when it said taino my pops had just said that just told me in recent history at that time that we were taino indians so from from it wasn't the isupk who handed me that flyer but from them having that on there it sparked me. It opened me up. It made me look deeper into what our identity was prior to colonization. It made me realize who we were. And, and it started my search. And I didn't come into the UPK till 10 months after I got that flyer. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think even the way I found the UPK was, was you know, a, a miracle. Because back then, we didn't have a lot of videos out. And it was actually a cell phone of Captain Hamakabath teaching somalians right <laughs> on the side of the camp i don't know if you remember that, video. I remember that. Kind of what kind. and it was in the middle of Times square and the somalian was holding the phone and he was with his partner and he was asking questions the cat mamaka both breaking it down somebody put general hazayun's number in the comments and i called you know what i'm saying i had a conversation with the brother and he was so sincere. He won me over because I, I was hard headed, bro. Like I, he, he was like, he's like, come to class. First of all, er, class, what, bro, class. So, so now me being from New York, <laughs> me being arrogant, you know what I'm saying? So forgive me, you know what I'm saying? But I turn around and say, uh, I, how much? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you talking class, I, how much you want, bro? Like, and he like, it's free. I was like, how free? Like, free, free. I'm like, what's the catch? Now, instead of him losing patience with me, he said, listen, brother, there is no catch. He's like, our people is in hell and nobody else is going to give them this information except us. So from him saying that, he won me over. Mm. And then he said, call officer, you know, Shawoya Allah. I was like, Sh first of all, officer? You know, in my head, I was like, me no talk to police. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I ain't calling an officer. And, and then that was that was the second strike. The first strike was class. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the, then the third, you know, Shawar, I probably could have dealt with. You know what I'm saying? Shawar sound like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like what, my nigga Ratchie from the hood or something. Like, but Ya'ala, Shawar Ya'ala, it sounded so foreign. It was, it was so, it was too, it was too hard to digest. I never called. Yo, no joke. A week later, General Haas called me. And you know, we don't call nobody back. Right. Nobody. This is the Lord. A week later, he called me back. And he said, hey, brother, did you call? I said, you know what? I did not. I ain't even going to hold you. I said, what was the number again? I'm going to call right now. I called and ever since then. You know what I'm saying? Y'all been stuck with me. But, um, you know what I'm saying? like, But all of that started because of that sign. All of that started because I was able to identify myself. And then through that identity, you know what I'm saying, was able to find the rest of the truth. You know what I'm saying? So Barak at the Yahweh, I was shot for that. But and that's 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 how important that this is. This is a fun, this is a pillar. You know what I'm saying? This is this is an absolute pillar. You know what I'm saying? In 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 us coming home. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't I don't know if you had anything else you wanted to close out with. Ah, sir, I think this is an excellent installment of what you're breaking down. <laughs> excellent. Well, most high on Christ. Listen, uh, Thabu One, I appreciate you, you know what I'm saying, pulling up. 
I don't know your availability Tuesday, but you you more than welcome, you know what I'm saying, to come back. I'm going to try to have uh, Officer Dawa die here as well. I would have called him tonight, but it was such short notice. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I, um, I, I, I know you a little freer than him, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I, I kind of hit you on the fly. At the but, water for having me. No, uh, most on Christ. I, the water for, for pulling up, the water for reading, the water for expounding. And... um. I'll uh I'll keep updating you on the information I put in the slide. You got access to the slideshow now. Okay. And um, you know what I'm saying? I'll let you know what time Tuesday, you know what I'm saying, that, that could work out for the both of us. Okay, sir. You know what I'm saying? The water for everybody who joined, you know, like, share, subscribe to the new channel. This is where Cross the Line will be live at moving forward. You know what I'm saying? And with that, shalom. Shalom.